Aladdin is an impoverished young child dwelling in one of the cities of China. He is recruited by a sorcerer from the Maghreb who passes himself off as the brother of Aladdin's late father, Mustafa the tailor, convincing Aladdin and his mother of his goodwill by pretending to set up the lad as a wealthy merchant. The sorcerer's real motive is to persuade young Aladdin to retrieve a wonderful oil lamp from a booby-trapped magic cave. After the sorcerer attempts to double-cross him, Aladdin finds himself trapped in the cave. Aladdin is still wearing a magic ring the sorcerer has lent him. When he rubs his hands in despair, he inadvertently rubs the ring and a genie appears who releases him from the cave, allowing him to return to his mother while in possession of the lamp. When his mother tries to clean the lamp so they can sell it to buy food for their supper, a second, far more powerful genie appears who is bound to do the bidding of the person holding the lamp. With the aid of the genie of the lamp, Aladdin becomes rich and powerful and marries Princess Badrol Bador, the Sultan's daughter, after magically foiling her marriage to the vizier's son. The genie builds Aladdin and his bride a wonderful palace far more magnificent than the Sultan's. Aladdin is a 2019 American musical fantasy film produced by Walt Disney Pictures, directed by Guy Ritchie, who co-wrote the screenplay with John August. It is a live-action adaptation of Disney's 1992 animated film of the same name. The film stars Will Smith. Does this tale have any truth to it? And what is its origin? You will see that there is a very sinister plan by the creators of this film to cause children everywhere to sin against the Most High. Aladdin is a folk tale of Middle Eastern origin. It is one of the tales in the book of 1001 Nights, Arabian Nights, and one of the best known. Despite not being part of the original Arabic text, it was added to the collection in the 18th century by the Frenchman Antoine Gallen who acquired the tale from a Syrian Maronite storyteller named Hannah Diab. Historians consider Diab the original author of Aladdin, with the tale partly having been inspired by Diab's own life. Since it first appeared in the early 18th century, Aladdin and the Musical Lamp has been one of the best known and most foretold of all fairy tales. John Payne quotes passages from Gollum's unpublished diary, recording Gollum's encounter with the Maronite Syrian storyteller from Elipo, Hannah Diab. According to Gollum's diary, he met with Hannah and had traveled from Elipo to Paris with celebrated French traveler Paul Lucas on March 25, 1709. Gallen's diary further reports that his transcription of Aladdin for publication occurred in the winter of 1709 and 10. It was included in his volumes 9 and 10 of the Nights, published in 1710. Payne also records his discovery of the Bibliotheque Nationale in Paris of two Arabic manuscripts containing Aladdin with two more of the tales. One was written by the Syrian Christian priest living in Paris named Dionysius Shawish, alias Dom Dennis Chavis. And other is supposed to be a copy of Mikhail Sabaj, made of a manuscript written in Baghdad in 1703. 
Genies were originally known as Jinn, with a more broad meaning of spirits and demons depending on the source, are supernatural creatures in early pre-Islamic Arabian and later Islamic mythology and theology. Since genies, according to Islamic teachings, are neither evil or good, Islam was able to adapt spirits from other religions during its expansion. Genies or jinn are not a strictly Islamic concept, rather they may represent several pagan beliefs integrated into Islam. Besides the genies, Islam acknowledges the existence of demons. The lines between demons and genies are blurred since malevolent genies are also called demons. However, both Islam and non-Islamic scholarship generally distinguishes between angels, genies, and demons as three different types of spiritual entities in Islamic traditions. The genies are distinguished from demons in that they can be both evil and good, while genuine demons are exclusively evil. Now even though the Islamic traditions teach that genies are distinguished from demons and that they can be both evil and good, the pseudepigrapha manuscript called the Testament of Solomon specifically states that they are in fact demons. The Testament of Solomon is a pseudepigraphical composite text ascribed to King Solomon as so associated with the Old Testament, but not regarded as scripture by the Jews or Christian groups. It was written in the Greek language, based on the precedents dating back to the early first millennium CE, but was likely not completed in any meaningful textual sense until sometime in the medieval period. In its most noteworthy recessions, the text described how Solomon was enabled to build his temple by commanding demons by means of a magical ring that was entrusted to him by the Archangel Michael. In this book, Solomon encounters a demon from Arabia called Ephipus and trapped him in a leather flask. The Testament of Solomon 117 through 124. And it came to pass, which I was in my kingdom, and the king of Arabians, Adares, sent me a letter, and the writing of the letter was written as follows, To King Solomon, all hail. Lo, we have heard, and it have been heard unto all the ends of the earth concerning the wisdom vouchsafed in thee, and that thou art a man merciful from Yahuwah, and understanding have been granted thee over all spirits of the air and on the earth and under the earth. Now forasmuch as there is present in the land of Arabia a spirit of the following kind. At early dawn there begins to blow a certain wind until the third hour, and its blast is harsh and terrible, and it slays man and beast, and no spirit can live upon the earth against this demon. I pray thee then, for as much as a spirit is a wind, contrive something according to the wisdom given in thee by Yahuwah thy Elohim, and dine to send me a man able to capture it. And behold, King Solomon, I, and my people, and all my land will serve thee unto death, and all Arabia shall be at peace with thee, if thou wilt perform this act of righteousness for us. Wherefore we pray thee, contemn not our humble prayer, and suffer not 
to be utterly brought to naught the upper king subordinate to thy authority. Because we are suppliants, both I and my people and all my land, farewell to my master. All health. And I saw him and read this epistle, and I folded it up and gave it to my people and said to them, After seven days thou shalt remain me of this epistle, and Jerusalem was built and the temple was being completed. And there was a stone, and the end stone of the corner lying there. Great chosen out, one which desired lay in the head of the corner of the completion of the temple. And all the workmen and all the demons helping them came to the same place to bring up the stone and to lay it on the pinnacle of the holy temple and were not strong enough to stir it, and lay it upon the corner allotted to it. For that stone was exceedingly great and useful for the corner of the temple. And after seven days being reminded of the epistle of the Darius, king of Arabia, I called my servant and said to him, Order thy camel and take for thyself a leather flask and take also this seal and go away to Arabia to the place in which the evil spirit blows and there take the flask and the signet ring in front of the mouth of the flask and hold them towards the blast of the spirit and when the flask is blown out thou wilt understand that the demon is in it then Hastily tie up the mouth of the flask and seal it securely with the seal ring and lay it carefully on the camel and bring it hither. And if on the way it offered thee gold or silver or treasure in returning for letting it go, see that thou be not persuaded, but arrange without using oath to release it. And then if it point out to the places where are the gold or silver, mark the places and seal them with the seal and bring the demon to me. Now depart and fare thee well. Then the youth did as was bidden him and he ordered his camel and laid on it a flask and set off into Arabia and the men of the region would not believe that he would be able to catch the evil spirit. And when it was dawn, the servant stood before the spirit's blast and laid the flask on the ground and the finger ring on the mouth of the flask. And the demon blew through the middle of the finger ring into the mouth of the flask and going in blew out the flask. But the man promptly stood up to it and drew tight with his hand the mouth of the flask. And in the name of Yahuwah Elohim of Sabbath, and the demon remained within the flask. And after the youth remained in that land three days to make trial, and the spirit no longer blew against the city, and all the Arabs knew that he had safely shut in the spirit. Then the youth fastened the flask on the camel, and the Arab sent him forth on his way with much honor and precious gifts, praising and magnifying the Elohim of Israel. But the youth brought in the bag and laid in the middle of the temple. And on the next day, I, King Solomon, went into the temple of Elohim and sat in deep distress about the stone at the end of the corner. And when I entered the temple, the flash stood up and walked around some seven steps and then fell on its mouth and did homage to me. And I marveled that even along with the bottle, the demon still had power and could walk about. And I commanded it to stand up and the flash stood up and stood on his feet all blown out. And I questioned him saying, Tell me, who art thou? 
and the spirit within said, I am the demon called Ephipas that is in Arabia. I said unto him, Is this thy name? And he answered, Yes. Whosoever I will, I alight and set fire and do to death. And I said to him, By what angel are you frustrated? And he answered, By the only ruling Elohim that have authority over me even to be heard that he that is to be born of a virgin and to be crucified by the Jews on a cross whom the angels and archangels worship he do frustrate me and he feeble me of my great strength which have been given me by my father the devil and I said to him, What canst thou do? And he answered, I am able to remove mountains, to overthrow the oaths of kings. I wither trees and make the leaves to fall off. I said to him, Canst thou raise this stone and lay it for the beginning of this corner which exists in the fair plain of the temple? And he said, Not only raise this, O king, but also with the help of the demon who presides over the Red Sea, I will bring up the pillar of air and will stand it where thou wilt in Jerusalem. I lay stress on him, and the flask became as if depleted of air. And I placed it under the stone, and the spirit, girded himself up and lift it up top of the flask and the flask went up the steps carrying the stone and laid it down at the end of the entrance of the temple as you can see in this passage the passage in the book called the testament of solomon a genie is nothing more than a demon and the story of aladdin is about summoning demons this is truly the origin of the movie aladdin disney is trying to teach children our children to call on demons these are the facts can you receive it or will you be offended by the truth? Aladdin, the origin, the truth about the movie, beware. The origin of the genie is that the genie or the jinn is nothing more than demons. Demons that people call on for their riches, for their wickedness, for service. Oh great one who summons me, I stand by my oath, loyalty to wishes three.